this is an industry that has uh, been behind in Washington and really been on the, the defensive from some, I think, uneducated and sometimes intentionally or not, I'm not sure, but really those who are trying to kill crypto in the United States at a time when we want the U.S. to be one of the financial centers of this next generation technology. A funny realization, which was that the only way we were going to get the politics out of crypto was to bring build a political operation that leveled the playing field and allowed the tens of millions of Americans who own crypto to be a part of the process. Not surprised to, to hear that question. I, the uh, crypto market is obviously doing incredibly well. Contrast that to just last year, about around this time, you know, Bitcoin, uh, negative sentiment, low price. Now we've, we're at all-time highs and we've been here for a while. So. Uh, as you might imagine, Kraken's you know seeing great success throughout this year as SEC's well. SEC's in your in your face uh, from time to time, right? You settled one one of the yeah. uh, issues. You got another one pending, and, and yeah. when, when does that is that today? Things yeah, there is actually the uh, our oral arguments for the motion to dismiss is today, um, and the motion to dismiss is basically our argument that this shouldn't even go to trial. Um, and you know, if we if we like look at what's happening here and kind of contrast, what do they it, say? Gets this for viewers. What what what's what's the what is the SEC contending? You know, they're contending that uh, some of the digital assets, cryptocurrencies, actually qualify as securities, and therefore they're you know traded on. So you're uh, not registered. Interest. As, as, uh, well, yeah. Which of course there's not actually a path to register. But you know, if we look at um, you know we serve markets all across the world: Europe, UK, Canada, Australia, US are our major markets and. Uh, we're active in all of those other markets, and pretty much every single one of them has uh, gone to a place where they've put in some reasonable set of regulations. And we contrast that to here in the U.S., basically a rogue regulator pursuing this path of you know, regulation by enforcement. And meanwhile, we have Congress actually trying to pass bills to you know, put something in place that's meaningful and appropriate for this. Who do you industry. think should be, be uh, mon or regulating? The industry, if it's not the SEC, what would you like Congress to do? Well, um, right now there's a, a bill that actually just uh, passed the House mm -hmm. with solid bipartisan support, 279 votes, I believe, um, the Fit 21 bill. And that actually puts forth a structure where this, both the CFTC and the SEC would regulate depending on the uh, depending on the digital assets. So, you know, for the most part, many of the digital assets would actually come under the purview of uh, the CFTC. Would you say that that uh, you're seeing more a more receptive um, Congress at this point? Maybe not the executive branch, I guess. Well, it's kind of all of the above. I mean, when we came into this year, the executive branch, like you noted, has been you know via the FCC primarily has been you know strongly negative to cryptocurrencies. Let's just say it. But um, there have been many supporters throughout. Uh, throughout the U.S. government. I mean, I visit D.C. periodically and met with many people in Congress, the Senate, and uh, there are a number of supporters there. And I think over the past several, I don't know, maybe two months or so, we've seen kind of strong support and now bipartisan support as well. I mean, the bill I just mentioned is one great example. We didn't expect it to be that successful, 279 votes, uh, was really successful. I think it was 71 from the, the Democrat side as well. So um, now we've kind of seen a little bit of softening up on the executive branch. Biden uh, administration said that they're willing to um, discuss and work with the industry, work with Congress to, to put forth a new bill. And so we're just seeing a lot of positive movement about stable coins, the U.S. dollar stable coin with huge adoption there, over $100 billion um, of adoption. That's something that actually kind of promotes the usage of the dollar, not just here in the U.S., but globally. And um, many of the stable coins also coming into the regulatory fold, regulatory compliant, as is Kraken, following, following the regulations that are in place for anti-money laundering and so forth. So I really don't think that's the, the answer, but it is baffling because then you ask the question, well, what could it be? And it, it's a bit of a mystery. So the election's coming. Do you think former President Trump is, is sincere about his recent comments about crypto does does he, does he understand crypto bitcoin or do, do you take him at his word that it would be a friendlier well touch uh, yeah everyone goes on a journey with with bitcoin and cryptocurrency i did myself and you know his comments on bitcoin and cryptocurrency are recent 
Um, so I would hope that he's kind of on that learning journey, learning more about it. When individuals actually take the time to learn about Bitcoin cryptocurrency, it's almost always so a positive future, outcome. 2024 will be the, the year of, of uh, more accommodating regulation and an, an IPO for your company? Uh, so 2025 was your question? I think... No, 2024. Oh, this year. Okay, we got to go quicker. Um, no, 2025, <laughs> 2025 then. Is, is more, you can uh, so change it. The accommodating regulation, I think we're absolutely on our, on our way with the, the passage of this bill in the House and potentially we get there this year with yep, the passage of the bill. for you, 2025. <clears throat> and then as far as Kraken, you know, fundraise, IPO, all these things are out there. Um, yeah, it's uh, timing is, you know, not something that we're, you know, defined specifically at this point in time. Okay. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join the patrons. If you're not a part of the patrons, make sure you're hitting the cash app. And we have Brad Garlinghouse speaking about the United States being behind. And guys, we know it was all done on purpose. We can clearly see that now, especially with this Ripple movie. And every time you turn around, there's a lawsuit. But guys, it was all for this fourth industrial revolution, the machine takeover. And we know the last stop is regulation. And we know these politicians are paid puppets. And we have Kraken CEO speaking about the SEC and how they have to battle with them. But the SEC keeps bringing these charges to stall the United States so the emerging markets can rise. But we're definitely going in the right step. By the end of 2024, we will have more regulation passed. And then we know in 2025, the United States is going to flip that crypto switch. And remember, the crypto teacher tells you. And Kraken CEO speaks about an IPO maybe next year. But we know 2025 to 2028 is going to be a movie. You're going to wonder what happened because the world that we're living in, and you can clearly see all this technology moving in. It's slow now, but it's just going to speed up every single year. But we know before that happens, we're going to get that crisis. And what did I tell you guys? We're going to constantly hear about these cyber attacks. Trump, the drums are beaten. CDK cyber attack shuts down thousands of dealerships. And we know how the NWO works, that mind control, constantly putting out the same message and the simulation. So eventually when it happens, you're just going to accept it. Guys, we've seen this movie before. And we have the Surgeon General says that there is a crisis when it comes to these kids' mental health due to social media. And we know that's a fact, but it's been a fact for 20 years. They've destroyed two generations. And now they want to bring in regulation because of the metaverse. Guys, just imagine the internet. And we know why the internet became the internet. So just imagine the crazy things that are going to happen in the metaverse. They have to put in regulation. You can open up the wrong door. And we know what's behind that door. People who were once lonely now become anything they want to become. At least that's what they want to think. And they're going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff in the metaverse. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. And again, guys, we get economic data. Jobless claims up. Building permits down. But guys, remember, this is what the Fed wants. We're in a fragmented world. They want to destroy everything in this legacy market. So therefore, you're sitting at home and these machines rise. And remember, the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Morning, thousands of car dealerships ground to a halt yesterday. This all because of a cyber incident at CDA Key Global. It's a major software provider for U.S. auto dealers, and the company provides a dealer management system. But guess what? It shut all of its systems down, conducting extensive testing and consulting a third-party uh, experts before restoring the core software products. As a result, core dealerships, car dealerships, core dealerships for them, uh, relying on that management software to conduct almost all of their normal business. Some stores were unable to schedule appointments, car servicing. Others said they were unable to access customer records or print even a repair order. Um, 
CDK has not, uh, CDK, I should say, has not elaborated yet on the nature of the cyber incidents. We're going to keep our eyes. The Surgeon General taking on social media platforms to combat what he is calling an emergency mental health crisis. In a New York Times op-ed piece, the Surgeon General writes, it's time to require a Surgeon General's warning label on social media platforms stating that social media is associated with significant mental health harms for adolescents. The Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, joins us this morning. And uh, Dr. Murthy, thank you for being here today. This is something, the move that you made earlier this week was one that um, definitely caught our attention, and I'm sure a lot of other people's as well. Explain why you think that this is a situation that warrants that sort of a label. Well, we're living in the middle of a youth mental health crisis. This is the worst mental health crisis among young people that I've seen in nearly 30 years of public health. And it has now become increasingly clear that one of the key drivers of that mental health crisis is, in fact, social media. We have to keep in mind that adolescents are not just small adults. They're at a unique phase of brain development where they're particularly sensitive to social suggestion, to social comparison, and their impulse control is not fully developed either. And what we are seeing is, unfortunately, many young people are exposed to significant harms online, whether it's sexual content, violent content, whether it's bullying and harassment, including from strangers, or exposure to features that would seek to manipulate their developing brains into excessive use. And that collectively takes a toll, which is why we found in the advisory I issued last year that young people who are spending three hours or more on social media face double the risk of anxiety and depression symptoms. So this is a profound public health challenge for us. What is striking to me is if this happened, if we saw this kind of data and evidence of young people themselves raising their hand and saying, these products are harming me or exposing me to dangers, with parents saying that as well, we would have raised flags years ago. We would have taken action. We should have done the same thing here years ago. So the warning label I'm calling for will help parents and young people understand the risks that we see, but it's part of a broader set of reforms I've called for, which are important to ultimately make the platforms safer for our kids. We just got a big batch of economic data. We're going to go through it. Jobless claims coming in a bit higher than expected. Housing starts and building permits. Now they dropped. To talk more about the economy, I want to welcome uh, Peter Earle, senior economist at the American Institute for Economic Research. Also, uh, Brendan Duke joining the conversation, senior director for the Economic Policy uh, at the Center for American Progress. He formerly served as senior policy advisor at the White House National Economic Council. Uh, good morning to you uh, both, gentlemen. Uh, Peter, I'll start with you. Your, your just initial reaction to this, uh, both from a political standpoint and if you're uh, sitting in uh, the Federal Reserve this morning, Jay Powell watching television, thinking to yourself, what am I going to have to do about this? So in the uh, jobless claims and in the initial claims, I thought they'd be a little higher, but I think we're starting to see the collision between the price effects of the uh, slowing disinflation in the first few months of this year, uh, the retail sales pullback we saw in Monday's numbers, and the settling in of widespread minimum wage hikes that took place in early 2024. You know, there's a growing body of data showing that uh, businesses are trying to reduce labor costs. Uh, NFIB polls show that business optimism is, is at levels last seen in 2012, 2013. So it doesn't seem surprising uh, that we're seeing some of this. Um, you know, the, the, the cumulative minimum wage increases in New York were roughly 23 percent, California 20 percent, Florida over 30 percent. And, uh, you know, this is on top of the of the of the 15 to 20 percent increase in inflation over the last three years. So uh, this is unfortunate, but not very surprising. You know, as for what the, the Fed's going to do, you know, Several times in the past few months, Powell has said that unexpected weakness in labor could, just like continued disinflation, prompt a rate cut. I think that if we continue to see rising initial claims, and we have to put that in the context of the uh, establishment and household reports we'll get later this month, uh, we could see, you know, a cut on the basis of weakening employment later this summer, uh, you know, absent what happens in uh, disinflation. Yeah, so my friends at Strategist Research Partners actually put this together, and they look at things that, you know, the average person buys every day, uh, food, energy, shelter, uh, utilities, the cost of insurance, um, and those have been, those costs have, have stayed at an elevated rate, and you look at the last nine months, um, that common man CPI rate has been higher than, than inflation.
So I think that's something that you have to, to have look at on a regular basis because that's the thing that people spend money on every single day. If you look at something like insurance, you know, look even at a, you know, a, a high growth state like like Florida. I mean, there was a recent survey that said twelve percent of the people there were thinking of moving because the higher costs of insurance to live there. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're 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 learning that things can be done. Uh, from remote, remote locations, we're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American. You know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETF, are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're, we're getting more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told as members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, New to Crypto's Coinbase, BitChute, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The Stock Channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get home stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, 
They were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.